Today on Grim 3D, we're going to talk about a little project I came up with for motorcycle safety. First, a little background to the problem. A motorcycle I bought, not a new one, used one, has a serious safety issue for some riders near the left foot. Right near where your left foot peg is, there's the bleeder screw for the clutch hydraulics. That bleeder screw is positioned perfectly to catch on your shoelaces. Any kind of shoelaces, tennis shoes, boots, doesn't matter. People across the interwebs have been chatting about the shoelace catcher in adventure rider forums for a long time. So basically what I needed was I just needed a guard that I could put up to block my shoelaces from getting caught on that bleeder screw. And I came up with this. Super simple. Quite frequently the simple solutions are the best. Let me show you how I did it. So here's the bike in question. This is a 2006 Suzuki V-Strom DL1000. I've had this bike now for a few months. And if you look, right here is the clutch hydraulics bleeder screw that I'm talking about. Right here, just below it, is where your left foot goes on the foot peg. Looking at this area of the motorcycle a little bit closer, you can see the bleeder screw for the hydraulics right there. You can see its position, and you can also see the small gap that's between it and the hydraulic line. Together, these make an insidious combination whose only goal in life is to capture your shoelace and never let it go. From this angle, sitting on the bike with your foot on the peg, you can see just how close your shoelace loop is to that hydraulic bleeder screw you can tell it would immediately jump in that gap any chance it got and wrap itself around that bleeder screw, trapping your foot on the peg. If you can't put your foot down in time, your bike has a good chance of falling over. This actually happened to me the first day I bought this bike riding it home from the sales. My shoelace got caught on that bleeder screw unexpectedly. I couldn't put my foot down at a traffic light and I fell over to the left in the turn lane. And you can say, well, that wouldn't happen if you were wearing riding boots. But the fact is, I use this bike for commuting. I go to school, I go to the gym, I go to town, I go shopping. And the one thing I really don't want to do is tromp around in my biker boots all day long every day that I use this bike, which is probably six out of seven days a week. I had to find a more permanent, easier solution that didn't require changing my shoes back and forth all day long. So I thought to myself, hey, I know a guy that can make custom plastic pieces. So I sat down next to the bike and started to make a crude drawing with some simple measurements. I then took this back to Design Spark Mechanical and started using my measurements to draw out the basic shapes for my shoelace guard. The first order of business was to get the basic shapes down and to make sure they're the right size, referring to my drawing all the time. Second part was to actually grab those basic shapes and pull them out. I chose to pull them out about two millimeters and make it thick enough that it could support itself, but make sure that it wasn't so thick that it would get in the way. Then to put the angle on it that I observed on the bike to help it fit. And angling it kind of created a weird angle at the top there. So then I had to get rid of that. And then I went through with my measurements and put holes in the shoelace guard where I needed the zip ties to slip through to tie it to the various parts of the bike. 
Design Spark Mechanical is a pretty easy program to use, but it does have some strange quirks. But through uh, creating, copying, moving, pulling, and changing, I got the holes up top where I needed them. And these holes on the bottom needed to be at an angle. So I set up an angled grid, drew my rectangles the size I needed them for a decent zip tie, and then just pulled those through. And when I was done, uh, my entire project complete looked about like this. When I got the design all sliced into the printer, I did actually print a prototype out of PLA first, but uh, we're not seeing that one. This is the PETG shoelace guard that I took with me on my motorcycle trip to the desert where I could stress test it and heat test it, make sure that it performed properly and didn't warp too badly so I would know that it would be on the bike for a while protecting me from catching my shoelace and tipping my bike over again. Now this particular guard that I built, this is basically my prototype. I took the drawing that I made sitting next to the bike and printed it in regular PLA, just the color the style that was in my printer at the time, to get a rough prototype. Went out and fitted it to the bike and it fits so well that I went ahead and printed it in PETG. Now, the reason I printed in PETG is because the bike, this is going to go directly on the side of the bike's engine. Bike engines run just under 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I needed to make sure I could put something on there that wouldn't melt, warp, disappear, get blown off in the wind, any of that kind of thing. The holes I put in it are strategically located to attach this guard onto the engine with zip ties. This particular guard has been on my bike now for roughly three weeks. One of those weeks, my family and I were on our annual motorcycle trip down through the Utah desert where the ambient temperature reached well over 105 degrees. You'll notice that I have a little bit of warpage, but nothing that would prevent this from blocking or guarding my shoelace from getting caught on that bleeder screw that's about right here on the bike. So it's worked pretty well. The clear PETG that prints kind of white like this is one of the better printing PETGs I had at the time. So I made this white even though a black one would suit a little bit better. So after I proved my concept with the bike in the desert for a week, very little warpage, I went ahead and printed this one. This is printed out of the same smart carbon fiber nylon, which should be more temperature resistant than the PETG, but it gives me that nice matte black finish that'll match the bike, and hopefully it'll be a little bit stronger. Um, it's very flexible, which I think is awesome, because now I can zip tie it anywhere I need to on the bike on that portion of the bike and it will fit just fine and it will stay. I got the same zip tie locations. This one goes around the clutch's hydraulic hose. This one goes around the bleeder screw itself. And this one down here goes through an adjuster bolt that is next to the bleeder screw itself. Well, there you have it. Using 3D printing to solve real problems. That's it for today. Remember, comment, subscribe if you would like. We'll see you out there.